Hey again. I wanted to share something really quick um, just to let people know that uh, God still speaks. He speaks to those who listen. Um, I wrote a blog about this detailing some journal entries that I had written from November 2019 until April 2020 back when I was living in Wisconsin and um, I and and some of these things came to pass things that you know I wasn't sure if it was from the Lord and the only way that you know that something that you hear or receive is from the Lord is if it comes to pass. And so there were things that came to pass that I was told were going to happen. And, um, and, and so I'm just going to share some of that just to let you know that God speaks and he speaks in different ways. It, it's all, it's individual and, you know, you just have to listen and pay attention. And, um, so hopefully it's not too windy out here. Um, but I, last year, from starting November 2019, I was told that there was going to be a big transition in my life, that a big change was coming and I was going to have to move and that I'd have to wait for further instruction and that it was going to be for our safety, for our protection. And, um, I didn't know what to think of that. I, all of a sudden, you know, and then I felt like this strong sense of urgency, like something bad was going to happen. And then I was warned that um, throughout this time period from November 2019 to April 2020, it was just like piece by piece. I was I was just kind of given some information and things and, and what to do, how to proceed. And um, some of that has not come to pass yet, but some has. So what ended up happening was I was told that I was going to have to sell my house and that I was going to have to move states away to my parents' home um, to help them out and that the big cities were no longer going to be safe and that prices were going to go up. I was told that I need to slowly stock up on food and, and things because prices were going to go up. And so throughout that time period, I obeyed. I started slowly packing my things at home. And I was home alone at the time. Uh, well, towards the end, I was I was home alone because it was in March when they shut the schools down. And my son was here at my parents' home to help them out. Um, so I ended up preparing to sell my house. Um, and of course, as you know, when 2020 came around, you know, the CCP virus just kind of broke out all over the news and, and, you know, things were shut down and a lot of weird, unusual things just started taking place. And, um, and I was warned that something, something was going to trigger all this into place. So whether that's COVID, I don't know. Um, I prefer to call it CCP virus, but, um, so that ended up happening and my dad's health, um, I was told my dad's health was not going to get better, that I would need to help my parents and my cat's health was not going to get better. Um, my dad had a diagnosis of cancer already, uh, blood can rare blood cancer. My cat had a tumor in her ear. So from... I think it was around March, March or April, my dad's health just declined, took a nosedive really fast. He um, had to go to the ER, the VA ER, three times in like two weeks. Um, the first time uh, was pain. He had to get put on blood thinners. Second time, he couldn't hold food down. That's where they found he had stage four stomach cancer, gastric cancer. Third time, he had no feeling in his feet, and they had to do a surgery and ended up having to amputate one of his legs because the surgery didn't work as it should, and they discharged him on home hospice. And some weeks later, on May 3rd, 2020, my dad passed away, and later that month, I had to put my cat down because the tumor in her ear, she was getting worse. So what the Lord prepared me for and warned me about came to pass. 
And on a side note, I, you know, even though my dad had suffered so much with the two cancers, the amputated leg, the, you know, just all that. And I was brought up Catholic. My parents consider themselves Catholic. Um, my dad knew where I stand. He knew that I read the Bible, that I love Jesus and that I'm a Christian. I go to church, you know, and this and that. And, and that just, that wasn't his thing. And he had a good heart though. He believed in God, but he would use God's name in vain. He had a temper, you know, he wasn't perfect. Like none of us are. And how I saw God's mercy in his, toward the end of his life, is that my dad wanted me and my siblings to make up. You know, he saw what was important. He wanted to make things right with everybody and ask for forgiveness for how he was when we were young, you know, and things like that. And it ended up that um, my my dad did get his, his wish for all the kids to be there. You know, we took a family photo with him on the hospice bed. He wanted one more picture. And... When the chaplain came, there was one day I was moving my belongings. I made two trips. Um, the first trip, the chaplain was there from the hospice team. And at the time, my dad could no longer speak um, because I won't get into the detail. It's something that gets me angry. It, it has to do with him being given uh, a pill offered by a family member that made him much different to where he couldn't speak anymore so he can nod he can acknowledge what you're saying but he couldn't speak so the chaplain said you know he relayed a message my dad wanted me to hear uh, it was just us three and one of the things that I did um, was I asked the chaplain if he could say a salvation prayer for my dad you know with my dad just to ensure because I wasn't sure where my dad was going to spend eternity you know God knows but I didn't know. And so my dad nodded and he wanted, you know, the chaplain was asking, um, you know, he asked if he accepts Jesus Christ and believes that he died and was crucified and rose from the dead and, you know, um, admitted that he was a sinner. And he just went through the, that whole, that whole speech with my dad. My dad was nodding. Yes. After every question. And I felt the peace and, and the, the chaplain assured that is just the simple childlike faith. That's all you need to get to heaven is that simple childlike faith and the confession and, and repentance and forgiveness. And, and actually, and I'm just, I wasn't planning on going here either, but um, so when my dad passed away on May 3rd, I was sleeping in bed when my mom called me and uh, to tell me that dad passed. And, um, and actually let me backtrack a little bit. Um, after that prayer, like the day after, I went back home to Wisconsin to um, get ready for the move some more. And um, that night I went to bed. Uh, or Well, a week later I went to bed, which was on May 3rd. So this was a week later where my mom called me to tell me um, about that. But... After I left, he, my son called and said that, you know, grandpa got, grandpa could talk again. So my dad was able to talk the next day, but at the same time, he lost his mind. Like he wasn't like, as if, you know, how people are when they're, when they have dementia or Alzheimer's, the confusion, that's where he was at the very next day. So God, graciously, graciously saved my dad the night before he lost his mind to the cancer and passed away a week later. Praise be to God. Um, and so when my mom called me to tell me that dad passed away and I got off the phone with her and I was telling my two uncles who my dad was close with that dad passed and then I just broke down and cried. I begged the Lord. I said, Lord, please let me know that dad's okay. I just begged him. I said, please. And I was breaking down. And immediately after that, like maybe one minute, two minutes later, my uncle tells me the most amazing thing happened. He sent this in a message. He said, your aunt was walking past my den 
by and and in this card box where they had like 500 pictures in this card box he said that she walked past it and a picture fell out of the box and it was a picture of my dad and i believe that is confirmation from lord god almighty that my dad is okay he's a miracle worker okay this is proof god speaks another proof but um so that took place and I moved here and um, and I'm, I'm noticing like even in when I was told prices will go up. I mean, you could probably tell too. Prices are going up. Shelves are still somewhat empty in certain places. Um, and I know that um, the thing that blew me away, that confirmed <laughs> a big part of what I was told that I that I know that it was God speaking was in August. I think it was August 23rd. A friend of mine um, back in Wisconsin told me he he said that he was he was shocked that the police shooting in Kenosha, Wisconsin, had just happened, and he was worried about the riots and that that would come afterwards. And you know, lo and behold, of course people probably coming up from Chicago it was close to Chicago all the big cities they were coming in driving into Kenosha from out of town um, lighting downtown on fire just being violent and destroying property and setting things on fire just destruction and violence and looting whatever all that stuff Kenosha's where I grew up I lived in Racine the house I just sold you know a few months prior was in the city just north of Kenosha and the Lord told me that we were going to move for our protection that cities were no longer going to be safe this was months before all this stuff took place so God speaks <laughs> and um, those are the main examples that I could think of you know within just this most recent time oh battery's getting low my laptop battery might die out but I just want to let you know that God is here. He is He is sovereign. He is everywhere. He is with you to the very end, no matter what. So be encouraged that God will be with you. He will protect you. He will sustain you. And he loves you very, very much. Um, and if he, if he can do it for me, I'm a nobody. If he can do it for me, if he loves me like that, I mean, it's the same for you. It is the same exact thing for you. Just listen. Listen, he will speak. 